Good morning, everybody. My name is Carla, and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also other crafts that I enjoy and a little bit of life thrown in. Uh, today is Sunday, March 24th, and it is my floss tube number 234. So welcome. If this is your first time finding my channel, I hope that you like what you see, want to hit like and subscribe and all of that good stuff. And if this is not your first time finding my channel, if you are one of my regular viewers who comes back every week, uh, thank you so much for being here and spending this time with me. Um, I do enjoy so much having you here and, um, and I enjoy your comments and seeing, you know, the, the views and everything. It just it adds a lot to my week. Um, if you are so inclined and are really enjoying my videos, I do have a super thanks button below. Um, and I also uh, have PayPal, so you can always send me monetary gifts. What am I sipping on? Um, I'm sipping on a cord or something. Uh, monetary gifts through there. Um, okay. Um, I... I'm going to uh, meet Julie stitching at the cabin for a late lunch today at two. So, and I got a little bit of a later start this morning. It is quarter to 10. So I'm hoping to kind of get a shorter video in. Hopefully it'll upload really quick, you know, fingers crossed. But of course if I want that, it probably won't happen. Um, so that it's uploaded before I have to leave. But if not, then it'll have to finish uploading when I get home. So it'll be up later. And, you guys might be wondering um but that is that's what's going on with me today so i'm gonna try and kind of not speed through but maybe not jibber jabber as much as i normally do um one thing i do want to do though is a zoom reminder uh next week on saturday which is march 30th so the day before easter if you celebrate easter um three-day weekend for me because I work for uh, very observant Catholics who close the office on Friday, Good Friday, so yay. <laughs> I reap that benefit every year. Um, but we're going to have a Zoom on the Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. So please join if you can. Um, okay, uh, so this week, uh, I'll be honest, I was it was lazy week again for me as far as crafting went. Um, I'm still adjusting to the medication that I'm taking, and um, it is not, like, I'm not sick. I just kind of feel moderately crappy off and on um, with some digestive issues, which is very normal. Um, so, you know, no, uh, no need to get into it, but it just, you know, uh, it, it was making me a little tired, and and um, I still stitched. I, I stitched on five different things this week. And I did have one night where I didn't stitch at all because I had a game night with my brother. But, um, yeah, I just, you know, I wasn't that into stitching this week or into crafting at all, really. I was kind of tired and went to bed early a couple nights. And um, so even when I pulled stuff out, I didn't always spend a lot of time. I put in a couple threads or something just to get it going. So um, I do have stuff to show you, but you know, it may not be huge amounts of progress um, because I, I still had kind of a, a lazy week. Uh, very lazy yesterday, did basically nothing. I had all kinds of um, plans for doing crafting and cleaning and all this kind of stuff. And I basically laid around all day because just did not go well in between running to the restroom. <laughs> so that gives you an idea. Um, but anyway, um, before we get into me showing you my, uh, my stitching this week, um, you know, elephant in the room, I'm wearing my cocoon shrug as I said I would. And if it looks like I just have a big blanket thrown over my shoulders, that's because that's basically what it feels like. Um, I am very happy with how this turned out as far as it being like my first garment and I do like the way it feels and it's going to be really nice to wear at home um, in the evenings if I'm chilly, you know, and I'm stitching. Um, as far as wearing it out in the world as a garment, I'm not so sure about it. It's just, I think, I think my big mistake was um, being worried that I'm too uh, big. You know what? I'm saying big. Then I'm too fat to wear the normal size. So I added stitches to the length and I think I made it too long. And that's uh, kind of contributing it to being bulky here because it's just, I it's not, it, there's too much. There's too much of it. Um, 
And I don't know that I made it long enough for me. I am semi-tall. So, I mean, I just feel like it's just not right. Um, if I did it again, which, you know, I would because it was fairly quick and, you know, enjoyable to stitch, um, I think I would not make it as long, you know, make it as wide as I did and maybe make it a little bit longer. Also, um, I followed, I almost said followed the recipe, I'll follow the pattern and just put two rows to make the like with sleeves. And actually, I think I would like actually more of a, a little bit of a sleeve. So I maybe do two more rows on the sleeve, which I guess I technically could go in and do that still, but no. Nah. Anyway, so it's really pretty colors. It is very squishy and it feels really good. I just don't think it looks great. Also, I'm hot right now, so I'm going to take it off. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to show you guys it on. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just kind of basically looks like I put a blanket on my shoulders or a shawl or something. So, I mean, I guess it's okay. I'm going to wear it to lunch today. Um, because, um, you know, it's, it's cool outside. It's not, it's not hot. It's not, it's not cold, but it might be a little bit cool in the restaurant. So I'll bring it with me. Um, but. I don't know. I just don't feel like it's necessarily a wearing out of the house garment, you know, um, which is a little bit of a bummer, but you know, I'm not going to sit there and go, I hate it. Cause I don't, I like the, I like the way it looks. I like the way it feels. I just don't think it looks great on as a garment. Um, but it's a first attempt. Baggy, are you here? You want to come up and say hi before I get going? No? Well, I can't, I can't pick you up if you're over there. All right. He's just going to yap at us. No, here he is. Come here. Nope. Do you want? Ah! Sometimes you are such a cat. Okay. Well, go lay down then. Sorry. He's, he's hanging around right here. He's not going to let me do my thing. Okay. Um, so as I said, I worked on one, two, three, four, five, five things this week. Um, so let me show them to you. Um, I was texting with my sister-in-law, Stacy, and, um, you guys might remember that she started stitching. I kind of got her into stitching a couple years ago. Um, and she kind of, she's a much more monogamous stitcher than me. Um, sometimes has up to three or four projects going. But this past year, she, she started kind of a large project for Reagan. It's kind of a Disney princess windows thing. Fairly large. And um, really loved it and kind of became monogamous with it. Because she just was enjoying it so much. But she's getting to the end of it and um so decided that she would make something bigger for logan and he went on to etsy and he found a full coverage pattern of like this like big dragon like fighting uh you know it's kind of like a D, &D sort of fighting a party of little you know silhouetted people or humanoids or whatever because i'm sure there's different you know shapes and sizes of the people because you know um that he loves. So she was texting me about that and, and her plans to start that project. She's never done a full coverage like that before. Um, the one she's doing now is full coverage, but it's big blocks of color. So um, this is going to be, I think, a bit, a bit of a different experience for her. But anyway, we we're talking about it. And because we we're talking about the dragons and stuff, it made me want to work on my dragon project. So that was a long way around to get to the fact that I worked on Sleeping Dragon's Lie, which I said last week that I probably wasn't going to work on. Um, and then, you know, I ate my words. So this is my large full coverage by Amy Brown. This is charted by uh, Unconventional Cross Stitch and it is background free. So I put it on fabric that I dyed myself. I'm still way down here in this little green corner. Um... So I realize it's not super exciting to see because all you're seeing is green corner, but you know, you gotta get through that sort of backgroundy part before you can get into the more fun part. So anyway, 
I did that much one evening. And I don't know if you can see right here, it kind of looks a little bit like there's a little darkness. That is, I believe, the beginning of these little, this little bit right there, those little leaves. I think that's what that is. So we're getting into where you're gonna see maybe something aside from just sort of the watercolory, modely background look but anyway so that was one evening I worked on let sleeping dragon fly I love this needle minder I don't know why I just I love I love the little fried egg <laughs> what can I say okay So this, I keep this project in a old pillowcase because I have it, I'm not taking it off the Q-snap since it's full coverage and that's just too much of a pain for me. Um, so I keep it in a pillowcase and I have this little hair clippy thing that they use to kind of keep it closed. Okay. Um, this is Bellatrix by Bella Filipina. And I worked on the window frame again. Um, again, not an exciting part, but you know, things you have to get done. So, um, this, I did more of this window frame and a little bit down here. Again, nothing, nothing exciting this week. Just, just getting uh, stuff done that has to, has to get finished. So this, let's, let's not drop everything, please. This um, was just like one, one stitch wide. So I added um, not all of it because I still have two stitches in this darker color to go all the way down. Oh, well, I have the darker color. Yeah, I have quite a bit more to go. But anyway, that's what I did. It was good stitching for me because I wasn't feeling like stitching. So it was just like stitched down in the row and... bit of a stiff neck this morning. Not really a stiff neck. It's more like right here. I hope that goes away. I don't want to go through work sitting it at my desk with that. Ugh. Okay, I put in some stitches on my Tinkerbell Petal Fairy. This is the project that I'm starting in honor of um, the retreat that I'm going to in November. And I want to kind of have like some of the basic stuff done. Um, so then I can actually work on the Tinkerbell. Well, at the retreat, where's the picture? Okay. So this is the original chart and I'm not well, I'm the only thing that I'm changing as far as the structure of it is I'm changing her hair. Um, you can see this petal fairy has like kind of a big bun on the back of her head. I'm going to move it up to the top of her head. Um, the flower and the stem of the flower, I have not changed any of the colors. Um, everything else I've changed. Well, the skin I'm, I'm keeping the same. The hair I've made blonde. The wings I've made shades of blue and the dress is green. Um, yeah, so I definitely want to have like the flower, that structure done before I go. Maybe her head and skin and then I can work on her dress and wings at the retreat. That's kind of my idea of what I want, how I want to, you know, tackle it. I'm doing this on a piece of petal, this petal fabric. 
um, Hand Dyes by Jim, which I think is associated with Silk Weaver. I'm not sure. I got this from eBay or something. Um, I don't know if I would have bought it if I thought it was Silk Weaver. I've talked about that before. I've had a bad experience with Silk Weaver. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if this is Silk Weaver or not. I mean, it's really pretty. So, you know, that's all that really matters. It's a 28 count Lugana. And working on the, the flower. So that is where I am at that. And I think this, this fabric's gonna be really pretty with the, the whole theme of Tinkerbell. Of course, I'm the reason I'm converting it to Tinkerbell, aside from the fact that that's just kind of fun to do that kind of conversion for me, um, is that it's the When You Wish Upon a Stitch Retreat, which is um, right by Disneyland. So it's, you know, I'm assuming it's going to all kind of be a Disney theme. And um, I looked for Disney patterns, couldn't find anything that floated my boat enough for me to make any kind of purchase or whatever. This, I made no purchase because I already had that chart from years ago. I think actually somebody um, gifted me that chart. Um, and so I had it in my stash. I've pulled floss from, um, from stash. The only thing that I purchased is I purchased a deck of cards to make my floss drop. So um, yeah, so I, I'm pretty proud of it. Okay. Um, Next, I worked on Xenia. Which is my third Bewitching Pixie that I'm doing on a sort of interesting backgrounds fabric. You can see the first one up there. That's Eva, uh, which I did on this really gorgeous moon fabric. And then I did last year... Um, I did this one, which was up there next to Eva, but fell off, and I haven't gotten up on the ladder to put it back up yet. Um, and then Zinni is my third. So I'm not doing the arch or anything like that because I'm using this fabric. And then I added the owl. I say this every time, so I'm sure that you guys who watch every week kind of are bored when I pull this out and say the exact same thing. But I did add the owl from another chart that I'm not gonna use the owl when I do that one. Um, but it's on this cool gate. Gate fabric with the moon. And there we go. So again, just continued on. I I feel like I'm I'm further along than I thought I was. I thought I was like at the bottom of her dress, but I realized like her her bodice starts like right there. So so actually I'm further along than I kind of thought. But she does have a big swoop, another swoop that goes out of the dress, which will quite a few stitches. Now this one isn't going to have very much beading. I mean, you can see down at the bottom here, um, these, you know, trails, well, that, those are for beads, but there's not gonna be a lot of beading on this one because a lot of the beading goes into the arch, um, that I'm not doing. So it's going to be very kind of light on the beading, but that's okay. Okay, and then last but not least, I worked on Sweet Pea Fairy by Joan Elliott. And love this one. This is actually done on a, it's being done on a 32 count Lugana opal all of these are opal because that's my jam and um this is a hand dyed by Rolanda fabric so pretty um 
love this fabric this piece of fabric and love this project she just she makes me happy she's so kind of free spirit and I want to feel like it seems like she feels like if, if that makes sense <laughs> I want to feel like she feels in this in this picture okay so I worked on her little wrap mostly the blues And that is my stitching for this week. Oops. All right. Okay. So, um, I don't have any haul or anything to show you. Um, I do, as I mentioned last week, I do have yarn on the way, but I haven't, I've gotten three balls. Actually, I think I got four because I think one is sitting in my, in my, um, mailbox, but, um, the majority of it, which I need to start the temperature blanket project is still on its way. Hopefully I'll get it like this next Wednesday. So maybe I can make a start on the blanket this week to kind of show you guys what, I'm talking about because some people seem to understand what I was saying and other people were confused um, which is is my explaining not their comprehension but um, you know of doing a temperature blanket in the squares so each month is a square and then you join them together um, anyway so I should be getting that yarn this week so I can possibly make a start on that blanket and then um show you guys like my color i'm not gonna show you all of those skeins but if i make a little color chart then you should be able to see um i thought about it because i know i was talking last week about you know whether i was going to do 12 or 10 you know if i was going to combine the first two categories because like the coldest temp because i'm starting at 50 50 to 54 then 55 to 59 those first two temperatures are going to have, like, I think the first one is maybe one time um, because, you know, it's a highs blanket. And so we have maybe one day this year that was uh, that low. Um, I mean, I guess I could, we have, could have lows at the end of the year as well, but, um, and then two in the next category. But I, you know what, I, I figure as long as I have the colors, I might as well just use all 12. So if there's only one row in the whole blanket of the, coldest color then there's only one row and it'll stand out and be like oh it was really cold that day um cold for here <laughs> um so yeah I think as long as I have the colors I might as well use them like what difference does it make if there's only one of that color you know then I, I will probably pick a color that's not uh my favorite of the group maybe I don't know and um yeah but it'll still be pretty because it'll stand out on its own thing so some people were talking about like doing different things on that kind of a blanket for days when it either rains or snows. I mean, it doesn't snow here at all. So it'd be days where it rains um, or special days like my birthday, whatever. Um, and I thought about that. Um, I know when people are stitching, sometimes they add like a blending filament. Um, I guess the equivalent of that would be adding some kind of a sparkly yarn. Um, someone mentioned they didn't think it would be like snuggly you know with a sparkly yarn because they can be scratchy although I do have to say because I'm making this all out of uh crone um simply soft uh simply soft party um has a sparkly thread running through it and it is super soft still even though it, it's got that sparkle but the the thing is is how would you would you pick one color for all those days or what you know it just doesn't I don't know. I don't think I'm going to do anything with that. And plus, because I didn't start this right at the beginning of the year to kind of mark which days had precipitation, I didn't, uh, I, I wouldn't have that information. Um, so I'm just going to do it simple <laughs> and hopefully I will get the stuff this week and kind of be able to at least show you what my ideas are. Okay. 
Um, other than that, plans for this coming week, aside from just stitching on my stuff, um, is to prep a couple things for next month. Um, my April is always kind of like friends and family stitch, uh, stitches, which for me means um, multiple fold things, things that I'm actually making for other people or things that I have like maybe started with other people that really make me think of other people um that kind of thing sort of you know so my gift my gift things so that I can at least get some work on these things and um so I do have a uh my Star Trek piece which I'm slowly making for my brother he got something for me the very first year that I started stitching I made like something that was really perfect for him and then I started this one at the same time but it's going a lot slower but that's fine and then I have the piece that I'm stitching for my sister-in-law um, which I also slowed down on when she started stitching, but I really would like to get that done this year. So, um, so hopefully I'll get a lot of work, work done on that. Um, I always start something, uh, or I always make a project for my friend Tracy. Um, for the last three years or something, it's been, I've been making her birds. Um, she really likes, uh, natural looking birds so you know more of the realistic um and so I started I just this was just a whim that I made her like this chickadees pattern that I found it was a crosswind collection chart and she really liked it and that just kind of led to you know what? I'm gonna make a bird every year so um so far I've did I've done the chickadees for her and I've done the blue a uh, blue jay and a cardinal um she also because she's really into the birds in her backyard she wants birds that she actually could see in her backyard. So, um, I am doing a hummingbird this year and, um, I have this chart again from the Crosswing collection. This is not it. Okay. Feather gem. So these are all hummingbirds. Um, but I there's like four different hummingbirds on here. But I looked up which ones were native to Pittsburgh, where she lives, and the um the red-throated hummingbird is a Pittsburgh bird. So that's what I'm gonna do. So it's these, this bird, and this bird, that's the female. But I'm not gonna do this thing because this is kind of big and I don't I, I tend to keep these stitches smaller so that I can get them done in the year and um also so they kind of all kind of go together in size and everything so I'm going to do these two birds but I'm going to use and if you'll notice all of these different charts there are pieces of the same thing so like like this is that bit of flower you know and that's the same bird as that you know so it's like that's how this is done anyway, so I can do it myself as well. So um, I think I'm using, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to use this bit of flower and then this bird and this bird. So he's gonna be in place of this one, but maybe a little bit lower. And then I'm kind of gonna bring this branch out a little bit with this leaf so that I can put her kind of up there. I don't know if that makes sense. And then as far as the flowers, I am going to make adjustments to the colors because um, they're not exact. Well, actually, they're pretty close to like the, the honeysuckle that is in Tracy's backyard. So she sent me pictures of the honeysuckle that's in her backyard. And then I'm going to try and I'm going to still use this powder. I'm not adjusting the flowers. So they're close enough. They're just going to have to be an approximation. But I'm going to try to... Um, kind of mimic the colors of the the honeysuckle that's actually in her backyard which is similar to what's on here but but a little bit more cream um in it and just like where the pink is gonna go you know i'm just gonna try and try and approximate how they look um so that they really kind of look like her backyard um so i have to kit that up this week so i can start it in april um I already, I made copies of the chart 
or the pieces of the charts that I need so I can put them together. And um, yeah, so I just need to pull flosses and stuff. Um, and then the other thing that I think I'm going to start in April, which is kind of a whim, but it looked fun. Um, out of this uh, cross stitch, uh, just cross stitch magazine for spring 2024. Um, I saw that uh, Laura stitching at the shore and then Debbie uh, Glitter Dove Fairy on Instagram, who is a friend, um, are going to do this along with some other people. And I thought it was pretty and doesn't look like that complex. So this is called Current Mood. In my head, it's called April Showers because I'm doing it in April. And But of course, me being me, I'm just going to like pull my own stuff. I decided to do it on a 22 count. Heart Anger was sulky. Um, so I just pulled some colors. There are six of Aldani silks that they're using. So they are slightly variegated. So I figured I could just pull some um, sulky blendables. So these are the two colors that are going to be the, the woman. You know, just like a black and a light gray. And then the six The six rain colors. All right, I like these little spools, but when they get, oh, good heavens. All right. All right, there we go. These are the six colors that I'm gonna use for the rain strings. And since they're doing, it's six on here, then I'll just follow. I'll assign one to each of the things and follow that pattern. And then I'm gonna do it on this piece of Hardanger hand dyed by Rolanda. So there's no name. Um, it's gonna be pretty small on this because this is charted on a 28 count two over. But I thought that this was really pretty. So I don't know exactly which part I'm gonna use yet. There's a little bit of a darker blue here, a little bit more pink in here. So it's funny when I'm holding it up, I've got light shining through it and it the colors are coming out much darker than when I see them on camera. So I don't know what exact part I'll use yet, but this is the piece that I'm going to use. And it is not, <laughs> it is not uh, sparkly, which is unusual for me, but that's okay. So yeah, so that is going to be <clears throat> started in April too. I don't, I don't know if they're doing a hashtag. You know, I'm so bad about posting pictures anyway and using hashtags. So I don't know, but check Laura's. She talked about it again this week, um, on what they're doing as far as a hashtag. But, um, yeah, so I think that that will be fun. Um, I have a feeling this is going to stitch pretty quick because yeah, I mean, these are just basically one thread down. So anyway, that's uh, <clears throat> that's the two projects that I'm planning on starting in April. So I just have to get those like fully kitted and ready. <clears throat> and um, yeah, that's about it. Um, so again, that's, that's my plans for the week coming up. Um, again, I have a three-day weekend next weekend, which will be really nice. Um, maybe I'll be able to get some work done on, um, little golden books. They're ready, uh, to just be filled and then I can start sending them out. I know <laughs> they're supposed to be done before the end of the next last year. And then I'm like, Oh, they'll be done January. You guys, you're just going to have, I'm going to have to stop making big promises, that kind of thing. Um, because I just, I'm not good at, at 
follow through when I have to like go to the post office and stuff like that. And to be honest, uh, money's tight right now and I'm going to have to send them out piecemeal because I have to pay for shipping and it's, you know, I'm going to have to actually package them and it's going to be, um, not super inexpensive to send them out. So, um, so yeah, but I'm going to try and start get, getting them ready to actually go out next week and then, um, and then we'll start sending them out a couple of months, I guess. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Um, until I see you guys again, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Uh, well, yeah, have a wonderful rest of the weekend and a wonderful week, stitchy week. Hopefully my body will be adjusting to the new medication so I won't be feeling quite so yucky, but you know, who knows? It can take a while. And since this is the kind of medication where they're slowly building you up, um, I have one more week on the dose I'm at and then I have to up the dose. So I don't know if that'll make me feel worse. I don't know. And again, I still don't know if I'm going to stay on this medication because it is again, very expensive. So we'll see. Um, we'll, we'll see. I guess there's, there's nothing else to say other than that. Um, it does seem to be working as far as what it's supposed to do for lowering my blood sugar and stuff. So we'll see. Um, I know somebody has sent me a comment, uh, actually sent me email telling me about all of the negative things on this medication. I just have to say, you know, I am doing this all under doctor supervision. Um, it's so, you know, uh, that kind of thing, you know, thanks for the info, but this is up for me and my doctor to discuss, not, not for me to discuss with people through my channel. So, um, you know, all medications have, um, have pros and cons and it is up to my doctor to determine whether things um are good for my particular body chemistry or not so um just rest assured that all of the the testing is being done that needs to be done to make sure it's not affecting me negatively um and then we'll see we'll go from there um anyway <laughs> I hope you guys all have a great week. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting up with Julie. Um, I kept the video semi-short. Um, I know a lot of you appreciate that and some of you don't. I like long videos on people that I like seeing. So when I see a video that's 20 or 30 minutes, I'm like, darn it, you know? But, you know, a lot of you guys, there's a lot of people to watch and I, I there's only so many hours in a day, right? But until I see you guys again, please remember to be content be kind and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.